everyone welcome to another video today we are talking to someone who has inspired inside me the curiosity and the love to discover metal music specifically dungeon synth and black metal and i'm talking about influx yes the influx if you have not listened to anything from influx before then either you're living under a rock or you're very new to this music but i'm just kidding I will give you a sample in the beginning of the conversation so that in case you don't know what his music sounds like, you have a reference point. And with that, we can get started. Also, one tiny favor that I require from you. I mean, feel free to not do it if you don't have the time or the willingness. But I would really appreciate it if you could take a moment and answer a question that is at the end of the video. And it would tremendously help the direction of the content that we are having on this channel. And hopefully it'll ultimately help the community as well. So with that said, let's jump in. See you on the other side. Hello, how are you? I'm good. You got your haircut? Yes. How does it look? All right. <laughs> All right, not great. Uh, uh, I I feel like I could probably style it better than what the guy they did. There is opportunity for the future, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have anything in mind uh, to discuss, or do you want me to start with my questions? Oh, you can start. Hmm? Okay. So. You know, I saw a lot of things on your SoundCloud and other accounts, and the main thing that stands out is your love for metal. Where did that start? Do you remember? Yeah, it's basically been something that I've been in, uh, introduced to or interested in since I was a young little kid. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my cousins were into it, and they were like double my age. Uh, they're like in their 30s and stuff like that. So when I was like, a little kid, they were already listening to like metal and stuff like that. So whenever I visited them, it was always around. Mm. So I got pretty used to hearing it then, and then it just started growing over time. Do you remember any specific song that you know kind of stuck with you for a long time? Nothing that can that I can think of at the top of my head. Probably something from like uh, Ozzy Osbourne or Pantera or mm. something like that. Okay, I have not enough metal knowledge to you know, catch up with you on the names. <laughs> That's fine. And how did that translate into electronic music, let's say? Um, it's kind of a weird story. So I actually got interest, introduced to it and interested in it because of a lot of YouTube videos at the time that I was interested in had uh, little snippets of it or uh, music that I listened to had that like, kind of like fusion mm -hmm. with it. And I was curious on what even that music was because i had no concept of it at the time so uh i think i was looking up something in like a class and then somebody next to me mentioned it and said oh so do you like dubstep and i was like i had no idea what the fuck that was i just kind of put it in my brain and it was like okay so there's a name to this <laughs> well thank you classmate <laughs> yeah so i was like i just started like diving into it because i was like curious and what it like who else was doing this? How big was it? What was the like entire thing with it? Mm -hmm. And it kind of just spawned from there. So you started listening to it. Okay, understood. I mean, I never got away from my listening phase. I'm still listening. I've never tried producing. <laughs> I mean, I've tried. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I failed. Uh, but I yeah. think most people don't transition to making stuff. How did that happen for you? Uh, I, To be honest, I kind of just was like... Uh, I'm listening to all this stuff, but 
I kind of wanted to, uh, just because of how many people uh, point out how easy it is to like start and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and like how uh, how it's not hard to make them. If you ever see any other interviews with like big producers, they always say like, "Oh, insert age can." even make this on their laptop so i was like okay i'm insert age i can do this <laughs> <laughs> and then i was just like okay why not i mean i got nothing better to do so why not at least see if i can even do it and i kind of started turned real bad got discouraged for a little bit then started getting stubborn at myself being like okay we're not gonna we're not gonna stop doing this until i'm at a decent uh like i'm at, at least good enough to not hate it mm -hmm. i'm still not there yet <laughs> you're still not there yet nope <laughs> okay that's again opportunity for improvement <laughs> yes so my next question actually talks about that how long did it take for you to at least be somewhat confident in your production skills uh probably about a year to two years i started in i think 2012 and then around 2013, 2014 was when I was uh, at least able to make it somewhat consistent and have decent quality and production to it rather than just not thinking and just slamming my head against the keyboard. <laughs> what were you making back then? Uh, I was trying to make, you know, really popular EDM stuff that was at the time like big. But every time that I ended up making things, it just turned into like this dark, melancholic sound. And that wasn't my intention, but because it just kept happening, <laughs> I was just like, okay, I guess I'm just going to keep going this direction. My muse is talking to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't even on purpose. I was, I kept trying to do stuff like, like what Skrillex was doing at the time, what, um, who else was really big at that time? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of like Electro House and like a lot of the people that were on Monster Cap at the time, like Tristam, Rogue, all those people. And I wanted to make stuff like that, but every time that I tried, it just kept turning into like this weird dark ambient like mesh of like <laughs> things. Did you like it that it was turning out that way? Not really. <laughs> at the time, because I was, <laughs> like I said, I was trying to do this completely like more like dance music. Sounding yeah, I mean, thing. people should be dancing, not like you know being yeah, depressed. Yeah, in the so corner. like when, so when I so when I kept hearing like this thing where like the most you could do was head bob, I was like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> what, what is this? And when did you start accepting it and going with it and actually you know making something out of that? Probably around the time that I discovered people like uh like um, Getter mm -hmm. and other people that were doing this more like tear out style of uh, dubstep where it was mostly just focus on like the the drop and like the bases and sound design so when i got introduced to that i was like okay this has like more of a rougher or harsher more uh angrier tone to it rather than like melodies and like super soft synths that just sound like you're listening to like the same like chords over and over again yeah so when i started hearing that stuff i was like okay so i'm already like halfway there i just need to remove all of this melody stuff and just focus on the main drop and i already had most of the software at the time from the other stuff and it was pretty similar so the transition from dance music that's like played at like clubs and people are just high <laughs> just not even paying attention to what's going on to like a from and then making this darker stuff was pretty easy from what i listen to your music now it is very different from what you're describing and uh, also from what you started with i guess yeah so <laughs> i actually have this tendency to like every few years or months uh going into my soundcloud and then privating deleting a bunch of songs that no. i'm like i oh, completely no. <laughs> i completely hate this Alerts I for fans. do not want this on here. <laughs> Download stuff. Download stuff and save it. <laughs> I leave it on Bandcamp. I used to have this link on uh, for like a media uh, fire like link that took you to like all this scrap uh, like deleted stuff. I used to have that link up for a long time. 
which I probably should update and put it on somewhere again. But mm -hmm. <laughs> but sometimes I just hear people like posting that stuff now, uh -huh. and I'm like, this is like almost like eight years old and you're posting this now and then i'm just like nobody if somebody hears this now they're just gonna think that my stuff sounds like that when now my stuff sounds completely different true does that bother you that people upload upload it so long after yeah because i i feel like there's like such an improvement from the my older stuff to now that when somebody posts something that's even just like three four years old I'm already like, I've done so much better stuff now than I did then. So I get kind of embarrassed when somebody <laughs> plays something like that. Or I, I cringe a little bit and I'm like, like that's yeah. not me. That was the older me. That's not me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get almost like a little bit of a, um, like, uh, what's, the, what's the word that I'm thinking of? Um, like, uh, what is it? Like pompous to yourself or like you feel like uh, that's not good music. <laughs> this is good music and you just it's just to yourself <laughs> like your older self and you now i guess that's one way of acknowledging that you made progress which can be a good thing yeah. if you take it the right way yeah because then you can kind of go overboard yeah. and then it's not just you then you think that you're better than everybody yeah i mean mm. it doesn't take very long to slip on that slide <laughs> yeah do you have any specific artists that uh inspired you uh yeah, so I guess it would be, uh, for the most part, it would be kind of like um, introduced to stuff like Skrillex. Mm -hmm. So that's like the main thing that I was in, uh, that got me inspired was like all the stuff that he did like early on, like uh, Roughneck and the whole Bangarang EP. And then transition to more emotional stuff like, uh, what Tristam was doing mm -hmm. on Monster Cat. And then after that, it turned into Getter. <laughs> and then after that, it turned into like um, Mantis. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of Getter did a collab with them. So then I saw, I heard them through that. And then I got interested in them. And then that turned me into uh, onto the whole Death Step scene was from that collab because I saw their, them tagging their music a lot with that. Oh. And I clicked on it. Old Mantis is so good. It was. I don't know what they do now, but like after like once one time I like got curious on what they were doing, and then I saw it was like all this like um, other stuff, and I was and it just sounded completely different. I was like, whoa, 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 what happened? <laughs> that was long ago. I think 2013, 2014, I guess. Yeah, 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 around there, maybe tw early late 2014, early 2015, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that turned into me uh, finding out about Moth. And every uh, and basically everybody else that was on Plagueborn before it was even Plagueborn, but like all the people that were like, uh, like right when it started. Mm -hmm. So once uh, I started figuring out who Moth was and then doing all this stuff on my own, then everybody kind of, uh, everybody on there found it. So, like one of the songs that I did, and then it turned into me talking to them. But oh. after that influence, it kind of veered off from uh electronic music altogether and then i just started listening to a bunch of like uh more metal even more metal than i already did so more metal punk uh more atmospheric like post-rock mm -hmm. stuff and then it just turned into me not even listening to electronic music anymore and only listening to like metal rock and punk for like the longest time mm -hmm. makes sense yeah so a question that I've been fishing the answer for uh, for a long time, Dungeon Minotauri. A lot of people say that you might be one of the people who started this entire thing, or it might be ruined. What? <laughs> <laughs> who the hell said that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll not tell you who said it, but I'll just tell you that I've, I have my contacts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was speaking to a few people and they mentioned your name. Um, ruined. Did they mention any songs in particular? I'll have to check if they did, uh, but it was between you and Venom Ruined. I mean, not the Venom name, but under the Ruined project, I think. And some yeah, people know, also mentioned Moth, but then I already spoke to Jerry and he's like, I have no idea what Dungeon Minotauri is, so I guess yeah. that's out of the question. <laughs> I, 
I feel like it would have been uh, ruined and Venom or mm-hmm. Venom uh, and Concavenator because they oh, yeah. were. I noticed that they were doing kind of like a thing with that uh, just before even this whole Agonist Dungeon Minotaur term mm-hmm. came to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in terms of myself, I don't know particular where particularly where they got that from. <laughs> Maybe just because a lot of my stuff had like that more s- uh, slow vibe mm-hmm. to it that that they're trying to go for. But in terms of actually that, I I think it would be more venom and concavenator type of stuff. Okay, okay. And what do you think is dungeon minatory? Uh, the simplest way that I can see it, hear it, and know what it is. It's basically just a fusion of minatory with dungeon synth and. That in itself, it, Dungeon Synth already was like a uh, a fusion of like black metal and uh, dark ambient music. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's basically what happens when a black metal artist wants to make dark ambient more, like in the simplest terms that I can think of. Uh, it has it's really like medieval sounding. Uh, they try to tell a story kind of with with the music. So to uh, already have something like Minotauri, which already had its like influences in black metal mm-hmm. and just metal in general to have something like dungeon synth uh put in there it kind of makes sense because you could just use that as like a a background like melody in the bottom have it as an intro outro that type of thing yeah and the rest of it, you can just miniaturize things, if that's a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much just harsh it as humanly possible with yeah. like just the twelve different distortion plugins all at once. Yeah, and I'm really happy with how it turned out because I listened to some dungeon synths a few days ago. I was trying to listen mm-hmm. to it, and I don't know why, but I had an expectation that it would be darker than it is. And I mean, it's dark, sure. Yeah, it's a, it really depends on like the artists because i've noticed i actually started listening to a lot of it recently Mm -hmm. uh because i wanted to uh i actually wanted to make a uh like a dark ambient uh like record ep whatever Mm -hmm. and all i could make was dungeon synth or (laughs) (laughs) or i ended up making dungeon synth type stuff and i was looking into it and a lot of it's either really lo-fi like just one synthesizer like a uh like with like just layers of other synthesizers or or the same one with like just top melodies and stuff like that or it was completely like more like a production for like a a a film or something like that where it had like a bunch of drums and like tambourines and then like (laughs) some some like uh strings with like a violin or a cello Mm -hmm. and like a, a flute for like a top melody or something like that and it just like sounded more like an orchestra <laughs> like that's like just being played during the middle ages <laughs> <laughs> makes sense yeah i still wonder though uh, why the word dungeon just because it's medieval i think so i think because it's like medieval and some of it sounds like it's being played in a a castle's dungeon <laughs> i think that's i think that's why it has that name to it Mm-hmm. I could be completely wrong on that, but <laughs> it that's what that's what I think that it is. I haven't actually looked it up or researched it, but I think that's the the where the term came from. Yeah. The first time I listened to something even remotely labeled as dungeon minatory, I mean I discovered the word from SoundCloud hashtag, so thank you to that. And yeah. I was wondering exactly why dungeon? Because whatever it was it sounded like somebody was playing it underground and there was this you know enclosed room like a huge room with a lot of reverb and echo and stuff so i thought that maybe sure that's why it's dungeon i figured out later that it's because of dungeon synth and yeah so (laughs) that yeah i think the idea came from i i feel like it might have been a natural progression because you uh like i said it's already has it like minotaur already has its roots in Mm -hmm. black metal with so many people trying to incorporate black metal into minatory mm-hmm. already so to if somebody were to just go crazy and listen to like a bunch of black metal you would find <laughs> some of these like one man uh black metal bands uh would release records that were just pure dungeon synth or dark ambient yeah makes sense so to hear that you probably think in your head ooh i might be able to use this 
as like a backing track like on its own or hell maybe i can even make my own uh dungeon synth uh song and then just turn it into a minatory song makes sense so basically when you're a producer you're always looking for ideas and i don't know even samples <laughs> possible samples <laughs> yeah yeah this could become that and that could become that a movie is not a movie a movie is a treasure trove of samples <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much I mean, sometimes that's not even my intention. I'll just hear, I'll like watch a movie and then I'll hear a, a quote or like a, a line and I'll be like, ooh, that'd be perfect. I got to go look this up when this, when this movie's over. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. And I guess that's how ideas, genius ideas are born when you're not thinking about it. Yeah. So how do you feel about the progress you've made so far? Um, it's been, uh, it's been kind of hard because lately I feel like I've been in uh, a sort of like writer's block and uh i feel like the the stuff that i've made i i can't even listen to like stuff from two years ago without like cringing really badly and wanting to delete all of it but uh lately a lot of the newer stuff has been more uh stuff that i don't mind uh playing more than once and not completely hating it but i think that's also a crutch for me because i feel like now that I've made those songs that I feel like I can't really do anything better. So I like lose my own motivation for even wanting to try to make something because I'm like, how will I make anything as good or better than, than these songs? That sounds like a trap. Yeah, pretty much. At the moment, I've just been kind of not focusing on it and just listening to a lot of music, hoping for some form of inspiration or... Uh, if I do get the inspiration, just write as fast as I can so it I keep that inspiration in my head. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it works out as a producer, but in general, if I was in a situation like that, I would think that, you know, forgetting about my past work and just starting from scratch and not having much expectation would be a way to go. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I could at least start, even if it's trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's why I also like to... Uh, make other like styles of music not just like death step death step minatory like mm -hmm. anything like that that's why i try to make like stuff like the the metal music uh and noise music occasionally just other things to get some creativity out do you do that under influx or is it a different project uh sometimes under influx sometimes nothing sometimes i'll just post it on like this second soundcloud account that i have that i just post like either unfinished songs or things that i don't think fit anything is that account linked anywhere uh it should be uh if not i should it's it's called a uh, life over oh yeah yeah you mentioned that yeah so i just post stuff on there sometimes okay i'll keep that in mind because i think I always visit to Influx. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I repost songs from there on my uh, SoundCloud. So sometimes if you just look at repost, it'll probably pop up. Mm -hmm. I personally never listen to reposts. I don't know if other people do or not. Do you? Probably not. I don't. <laughs> I usually don't. I mean, people talk about reposting, helping them, getting the exposure, but... If nobody's listening to them, then how does it work? I don't understand, but I guess there are people who are listening to stuff. Yeah, there might be. It might be like a, a thing where somebody like hits a uh, play on a song and then they let it go on and maybe it goes through the reposts or, you know, things that are similar Yeah. anyways. So maybe the more it's reposted and played, the more likely it'll pop up in related. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'll have to look into this. That's just a guess. I, I... <laughs> it, it's a sensible guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's talk about God Hand Collective. How did that start? And who are the people involved? Uh, it started off just because I saw so many people making like these like more like groups rather than labels. And I thought that that would have been a good idea or something cool to do mm -hmm. is to have like a bunch of my friends just kind of make stuff that they want and then post it wherever if they don't want to post them like a label or something like that and just uh have free reign on when and where they want to post it oh okay makes and, sense. yeah but i guess that didn't really uh translate well for the the other people that were that were in it except for me and uh pyre <laughs> <laughs> why not what happened 
I don't know. Uh, a lot of the time, some of them will message me saying, oh, I have a, a song that I want to put on there. I say, cool. Uh, let me know when when you want to want me to post it or anything. And I, I would never hear back. Oh. <laughs> they would just never tell me. So I was like, okay, I guess that's down this... the drain or never <laughs> went anywhere. Okay. This has happened multiple times? Yeah. With uh, at least like three of them. Okay. I mean, it could be that that person specifically has a, you know, some problem finishing a track, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. It's <laughs> uh, I, I feel like it might have been that, or it might be that they uh, they planned on it being on uh, Godhead Collective and then just posted it on, uh, like, a, a label. Okay. Yeah, that would also make sense. Yeah. So is it still active? It's technically active, but it hasn't posted in a year, so probably not. I also get people messaging the account or like uh, me asking to join it, thinking that it's a label, but it's not. <laughs> so they're like, where do I submit? What do you have to do in order to, you know, release with God Hand Collective? It's just a bunch of my friends. I, they don't even have to like, uh, there's not even really any like guidelines to it. They can just post whatever they want on there. So oh, if they wanted to post okay. like a whole pop album or something like that and Obviously, they wouldn't be able to post it on their other stuff. They could just post it there, and I wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of like a closed club. Nobody's allowed to yeah. enter unless they're your friends. Yeah, pretty much. Unless I invite them or somebody else wants to invite them, then yeah, it's pretty closed. So I guess the secret to that is the friend influx. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you would do that, but <laughs> all the best. I wouldn't know either. <laughs> Yeah. Are you working on any current projects? Any albums? Uh, yeah, I just finished writing that uh, Dark Ambient Dungeon Synth uh, EP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, six tracks. And I just finished that and uh, I sent it to uh, to somebody to be released somewhere. Okay, so it's all. I don't know if they out. want me telling. It's not out, but it's like I mean, in it's their out hands. From and your they can... box. Yeah, it's out from my hands. Okay. And. I don't really know if they, if it matters to them if I say where or who I sent it to. Okay, so I'm just let's not, not say, say it. it then. <laughs> yeah. And other than that, are you currently on a break or, you know, doing live stuff? I just kind of just goof off in, <laughs> in FL when I, when I, uh, when I'm not binge watching a bunch of like random YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. On that note, what, what do you exactly do when you're not making music? I mean, it's, strange to think of music producers as as actual people living life and you know <laughs> being the goofy selves yeah. and yeah in my head they look like people who are sitting in a dark room all the time <laughs> trying to come up with just have just just <laughs> just in their cloaks just standing <laughs> in the corner of their room really dark yeah. yeah yeah with a mask on <laughs> and then the, their parent walks in like honey do you want anything they're just like go away <laughs> <laughs> Not that extreme, but yeah, some <laughs> some image of that. Come on, you know somebody's doing that somewhere. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm I basically just like play like video games and just watch YouTube videos and occasionally, if I'm inspired, just make goofy music. Mm -hmm. Oh, you make goofy music as well? That's interesting. Yes, yes, I sample Goofy's laugh and then I turn it into a song. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this reminds me of some uh, some nightcore versions of some 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 Minotaurian death step songs I heard. I think oh Alan Lee does that <laughs> sometimes. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, I mean those are like memes in themselves. Yeah, I mean nightcore in itself was just, is just like a one big meme. <laughs> I don't know enough about it to say anything on that, but this ones I listened to they sounded like memes. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, that's most of the questions I had, except there's one song that I would like to talk about, if that's okay. Okay. Assisted Suicide. Mm hmm That's my favorite from you. So, um, anything you remember while making that? Hmm. Yeah. I, uh, there was a lot of, uh, stuff going on at the time that I just wanted to, uh, put onto, like, a song. And, uh, I was, uh... I don't know if it was this song or something, or if it was because of this, but I was talking to uh, Jerry or Moth at the time, and I was asking him to recommend movies to me because he was he's like a big movie buff. Uh -huh. So, uh, and I don't really watch movies all that often. So, uh, I wanted to 
get some uh some movies to for him to recommend to me and one of them was uh a movie called johnny got his gun okay and the the whole movie is basically about a uh i think it's world war ii or world war one one of those it was a basically a war uh, like a soldier that got hit with like uh an explosion uh, in front of him and he basically lost all of his senses more or less oh. uh he could he couldn't see hear speak basically couldn't do anything he was pretty much a potato but the whole time that the movie's going on you're seeing everybody like the nurses the doctors uh other like generals and stuff like that coming into the play to, uh, like into the movie to see what to do with him or who who even is this guy because they still didn't even know who he was oh and the whole time in the beginning of it there's a nurse that comes in and pities him and thinks that there's nothing left for him and that she basically just wants to uh put him out of his misery okay. and kill him so that's where the the line comes in where he's like uh thank you nurse uh basically just saying like please kill me i want to die oh and then that's somebody... the assisted suicide part okay yes so it doesn't work uh uh uh, one of the head doctors comes in and stops her, and then he gets sad and angry also. <laughs> but how like, does he express any of that? I mean, he does not have any senses. The entire time that the film's going on, you're in his head. So he can, oh. he's still talk. he's talking to himself pretty much in his own head. Okay. Saying, like, please. Uh, and by the end of the film, he's able to communicate with Morse code because he also can't hear anything. So he figured out the only way that I can communicate is through Morse code. So the only time that... Uh, the way that he communicates is through his head. So he, like, bobs his head back and forth, pretty much. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't laugh, but it sounds funny. I mean, it does look pretty funny when you're watching it. <laughs> Interesting movie. I might have to watch it. Yeah, it's pretty old. I think it's from the 70s. Yeah, it was also a movie that was used in the, uh, the music video for One by Metallica. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they used it on that one. Okay. I found it after the fact <laughs> when I watched the movie and I was looking it up more to research it and then I saw that they used it and I was like, oh, okay. On that note, do you have any specific tracks or projects that you are, you know, happy about? Um, probably it would be either, ah, see, this is kind of hard because there are some songs that I like parts of them, but then I don't like other parts. <laughs> so, so like, um, so like, the song Forgotten Void of Bloodstained Mirrors. I like the the intro and the drop, but then the thing immediately after the first drop, I hate. Mm -hmm. I wish I didn't put that in at all <laughs> and just <laughs> left it as it is. But if I had to say, it would probably be uh, either Black Cauldron or Terraphobia. Yeah, you mentioned Terraphobia before. Yes, because it's like the only one that sounds different, more or less, for everything else. Ah, okay. And what is your direction going forward? Are you still going to try to make angry music that is, you know, by default turning into sad stuff, black metal stuff? Probably. I, who knows, to be honest, even I don't even know. Mm -hmm. it, it could be this, but I could find something that like really inspires me to make something completely different and maybe incorporate it into it. Maybe just do that specific style that inspired me. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of scope. Yeah. So, who knows? Probably, uh, I might have to find some inspiration to make me want to do more angrier music, like the last two tracks that I did, As the Thousand and Furnace. Right now, uh, listening to your voice, you don't sound like a very angry guy, are you? On the inside. <laughs> <laughs> and, in, and occasionally. How do you explain internal anger? Um, it's basically... Uh, naturally, I'm not angry mm -hmm. uh, towards people, but I have a very short fuse. So uh, it's very easy for me to lash out at people or get angry. But for the longest time, I was able to kind of keep that uh, down. But that just caused me to internalize a lot of anger. So mm, there's just I like see. a bunch of pent up anger that has had nowhere to be put. So that's where the angry music comes in. It doesn't sound very healthy. Probably not. <laughs> but but I, that's the only way I know how. I don't really know any other way of doing it. No, I mean, at least you have some sort of event through the music. 
I meant the yeah. keeping it inside part. That that's not healthy. Yeah, yeah, that part. No, probably not. <laughs> I mean, I personally don't have. You know, I I don't know for some reason I have this incapability to get angry. I'm like I'll be pissed off at max. I'm like okay, fine. I won't deal with you. That's that. You can't get you know you can't get me angry unless you're my mom. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. But I have that, but with being offended with a lot of things. So I don't I can get angry, but I don't get offended at things that people say or do. Hmm, interesting. Interesting distinction. Yeah. So what makes you angry? Uh when people do dumb things and they repeatedly do that dumb thing even after being told that they shouldn't be doing that dumb thing. Like they don't listen. Like people that don't listen a lot which is kind of like a i guess like a ironic because sometimes i don't listen <laughs> <laughs> but obviously me as a person i'm just thinking i'm trying to justify why i'm not paying attention in my own head so i'm like oh i'm not paying attention because of insert reason here well i'm just <laughs> assuming that somebody's not paying attention because they're not paying attention yeah <laughs> because there's no space for them to insert reasons <laughs> yeah so i'm just like ah what are you doing you idiot stop stop being an idiot idiot come on <laughs> mm -hmm. okay makes sense i mean yeah. it doesn't but sure <laughs> <laughs> I, it doesn't happen often okay it's not like every other day i'm like fucking mad at somebody i mean who am i to judge i don't even know you so <laughs> okay so what question for or from the uh, people who are starting out with music right now or Ooh. who started like recently what would you tell them what is a good way to you know not get stuck in places where you want to quit because that happens a lot it does uh don't use sample packs from people uh there's there's like this big thing about especially with this whole thing about pan snares that some people since they don't know how to make them or uh or anything like that they just find some generic sample pack from some random guy and then use that one that one only never decide to change it or manipulate it whatsoever to make it theirs oh. so i would say in terms of snares specifically just steer clear of that kicks it's not as bad because i mean it's just a like a thump like a really just a kick so it's kind of hard to you know tell often where kicks are from or how to make a bad kick it's very hard to make a, a, a kick sound bad <laughs> <laughs> okay and symbols too i mean in terms of symbols most people just use like a, a china symbol mm -hmm. you can you can use other stuff too but if it sounds like a like a like a symbol like a crash from like a vengeance pack or like splice or something like that it just sounds like it's from like an edm house track or something like that or like a drum machine mm -hmm. probably steer clear of that one too Nobody really uses hi-hats in, in this kind of music. Very rare. So I don't really feel like I have to mention that. But in terms of like stuff like snares, you probably want to figure out how to make your own. They're actually pretty simple for the ones that are more common now. It's usually just like a a a, a usual like thumpy, like 200 hertz punching snare with like a sine wave under it with like some like white noise or like a, a clap under it for mm -hmm. that extra like I, I don't know what to call it like a tail for it okay or it could also just be like a, another china symbol under it but you can use like a sine wave pretty simple like just a higher pitched sine wave don't just use the the, the bare like beep of it that will happen <laughs> you want to use there's a usually like a uh attack release delay thing mm -hmm. on most DAWs. Uh I would say mess with that a little bit. <laughs> At least enough to where it doesn't just sound like one long beep or whatever. You don't even have to do this way. This is like just one of the ways. Makes sense. So I think ultimately your goal to, you know, make your own stuff is to not sound like everybody else. Is that why you're telling them to do yeah. that? Pretty much, because you, if you listen to anybody that's starting out, most of them all sound the same, or uh, maybe not sound the same, but they're all pretty easy to tell that they're pretty new to it. There's not a lot of, their mixing's pretty rough, 
Mm -hmm. Their sound design is usually just like some generic like bass with just bit crush like <laughs> turned on max to where it just turns into a big fat sausage. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just figuring out how to sound more unique and also making it sound good at the same time because you can make a sound sound really unique but it it one it might not fit or it might just not work for what you're going for like in terms of uh what would it be like maybe it's too unique to the point to where it just sounds like nonsense <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> just like okay i what is this <laughs> i mean there might be audience for that but <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah i would say just just try to make something that sounds more like more you rather than more of everybody else. Okay, understood. At least that's what I would, you know, personally take note on because I might try to do something in the future. Ooh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a secret. <laughs> oh, no, it's not a secret anymore. Everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might try. I don't know. I'm too afraid to do anything. <laughs> hey, hey, no, no. Can't be afraid. You just got to say, fuck it and do it because yeah. you want to do it. <laughs> I, it's easier said than done. But hey, I'll try. Hey, 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 hey. You have a good point there, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, wiggle out of the situation. But I guess you can, you got me. Yeah. Okay. We'll try. I'll try that. Um, when? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, you don't even have to share it with anybody. You can just keep it to yourself and be like, I'm just going to goof off and do this oh that i already do <laughs> oh see see you're, you're already doing it <laughs> yeah but i don't know buddy so now they know <laughs> uh, no they don't shh, shh. bleep it out bleep it out nobody knows nobody knows <laughs> yeah actually i always had this idea of combining something that is very traditional from my culture and uh, and whatever is the rest of death step and is mm -hmm. doing i because the traditional stuff does not have the energy I want. It has the mood, <laughs> but it's not aggressive. It's not intense enough, you know? It's, it I has mean, you don't vibe. have to have it intense or aggressive. But I want it, <laughs> you know? Well, I, yeah, that's why, you, that's why you, keep, you, keep it, you keep that part. You keep it mellow. And then that's like the break time. You don't want it all to be aggressive. You want some, like, break so everybody's just not, like, throwing at, like, anger and harshness at their face yeah so you you do that and then in the in the in the big part the drop that's where you get them with the with like the the anger harshness thing yeah one time i i wanted to put a sitar in like a in a song i think i did but it's just like so drowned out that you can't even hear it oh is it still on or did you remove it yeah no i i left it in it's still in there i think What's it's on uh, the way wings of darkness and in the intro there's actually a sitar playing i think oh interesting i I don't yeah. think I'd ever noticed that. Yeah, it's because I, I found a, a, a video of somebody playing a sitar and I liked how it uh, would, uh, it had like a resonant yeah. uh, like string and like you would play so like sounds and then it would just like resonate with everything. And I liked how atmospheric it sounded with that. So I was like, all right, I need something to put this in. It doesn't <laughs> matter what it is. I want this in something. I guess you did at the end. So <laughs> that's that. Yeah. All right. Last. Not a question, but last point. What would you want to say to the community in general, listeners or producers? Um, I would say listen to a lot more music. Broaden the type of music that you listen to, because I've noticed that a lot of the people that are list like I think Moth said it, a lot of the people that are making it listen to it mm -hmm. as well. And they kind of just kind of go off of each other rather than trying to again, make something more unique or like something that's different to what everybody else is doing. They're all kind of just looking at what somebody else is doing and then trying to do that, but maybe better or exactly the same. And it kind of just ends up in like this circle or hole where there's nothing creative going on. It's just everybody kind of just echoing doing... each other. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe looking at more uh, music that's more like uh completely different that you still also like and then maybe incorporating some things from that it doesn't even have to be crazy like uh influenced by it it could just be like small little things uh that you take from one genre and add it in i think it adds to the freshness part of the things yeah because 
you can even if you're not even making it, you can still get burnt out from just listening to that same. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. See? I've done that so many times. I I had to go on for like two months, three months breaks, and I'm like, I don't want any of that. I can't process that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, because it, it you just start like hearing it, and then you're just like, "Come on, something new! Come on, exactly. come on!" No, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Do something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just like, "Come on, there's nothing new. There's nothing different, new, and unique that you guys can do. Come on." Yeah, and at the end, you sound like this, you know, angry kid who wants more candy, but he doesn't get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, you're just whining at everybody. Nobody's making anything <laughs> cool anymore. It's all the same. <laughs> Exactly. You guys suck. <laughs> I mean, no, you don't. You guys don't suck, but yeah, sure. <laughs> At the moment, it might feel like that. Yeah, you, it's, it's just like um, it's like uh, you're one of those kids that's like, I don't want to hang out with you guys anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or that meme of like Andy from Toy Story, like I don't want to play with you anymore, and he drops the toy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So anything. Last words you want to ask me? Anything that you want to say? Uh, nothing that I can really think of now. Okay. Just, just keep doing what you're doing because it's actually really fun. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I like watching them. <laughs> oh, thank you. It is actually a lot of fun. And I started because you know there seems to be a serious lack of conversations in this community. Everybody is just stuck in their own rooms and their own yeah. heads in their own projects. And nobody's talking to each other. Yeah, they also like to keep things hush hush, or everybody's just like really socially awkward and doesn't want to talk to each other. And I find that contrary to the point because everybody who's mentioned that they are socially awkward, it, they have spoken really well so far. Yeah, but I think it's when they start seeing uh, other people that also uh, like make stuff. They kind of feel like everybody's sort of like against each other in a way where. Yeah. I've I've noticed this in like and any minatory Discord like uh server. For the most part, it starts off everybody's active, but then it just turns into a shit show. <laughs> and then nobody says anything afterwards. <laughs> and, and then it just turns to a dead Discord. Yeah, I've seen that happen so many times. Yeah, and I for some reason it seems to only happen in this community. If I go to like uh, a different Discord, mm -hmm. it's active like 24-7. Maybe there's like occasional dips where it's like not as active, but then it just picks back up again. But with this community, it seems like everybody just wants to make something, share it, and then somebody just sends a meme. And it's not even funny. It's just like a really bad like shit post. And then nothing is said. No no uh no critiquing, no like saying that this is good, no comments whatsoever. They just post a meme and then it's back to nobody's saying anything. <laughs> I guess it all comes down to the being socially awkward in Discord. <laughs> I guess. It, either that or, like, I, I don't really get it. It's It happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am on Discord servers because I like to watch things, you know, just from a spectator's yeah, like, point of view. <laughs> I, yeah, I like looking at them and seeing all this, like, weird drama that makes no sense that just happens. And I'm like, oh, okay. Grab the popcorn <laughs> real quick and start watching this happen. Mm -hmm. I don't really get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm there for the art most of the time. I'm like, there's a lot of very talented artists on these servers. So, yeah. Yeah, there is. But, like, it's just filled with bad memes and <laughs> a lot of, like, I, I guess it comes with the territory, but a lot of negativity in That's terms true. of, like, talking to each other and kind of being dicks to one another and not really doing anything productive i guess i i mean i'm looking at one right now and let's not mention the name let's just say it's a generic yeah. discord server yeah it's just a it's just one of those discord servers and i'm just seeing everything and it's just somebody saying something somebody else saying something somebody replying with one word and then that same <laughs> person that they're tagged like that they're replying to says the same thing and then it just turns into everybody saying one like the same one word over and over again and then it just stops for like three days <laughs> yeah i've seen that i've also seen stuff like you know people start writing numbers so it's like one two three and everybody yeah. for some reason they'll just respond with the number which is next and i once asked why are we doing this and then somebody said that don't, we don't know we're just doing it i'm like um okay 
<laughs> no, no, this you this could also happen. You ask why is everybody doing this, and then they just ignore you and go oh, go yeah. back to it. <laughs> It'll be like one, two, three, four. Why are we doing this? Five, six, seven, eight. And then <laughs> like that's never like, happened. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, ah, just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like, you know, people were programmed to do that. They were bots essentially, not people. Yeah. It <laughs> they're monkeys. <laughs> they're like monkey see, monkey do. I gotta do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll figure out what happens to the Discord servers. I don't of... think I'll ever figure it out. <laughs> I just think it's an enigma. I left so many Discord servers because I got so frustrated with the unnecessary notification that I used to get. I'm like, no, I cannot mute every single one of them. It's just too much effort. I would rather leave it and join it whenever I need it. Yeah. Oh, you just <laughs> said what I do. I just get into these servers and then instantly mute it. I just, and then occasionally look at it. Yeah. Or I leave it so when I'm added that sometimes it'll send me one. So like... Uh, but then most of the time it's just an at everyone and I'm like, why are you doing this? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what to do about that, but let's see. I don't know either. I just, I just hope it doesn't always stay like that. Yeah. Let's, let's hope that. Yeah, I think it's just, um, that a lot of them are, uh, teenagers, like are in the ranges of like 14 to 18. So a lot of. Uh, granted, there's a lot more of them that have uh, been in the community longer, so they're now like in their like early 20s. Mm -hmm. So they're probably a little bit more calm. Well, actually, no, I don't think so because I've seen <laughs> some of them actually do the same thing. But I guess it's just because preteens are preteens, and they just think that something that's just randomly offensive is somehow funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, haha, you're angry. Therefore, I am funny. <laughs> oh, okay. I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you always see it. You're just like, somebody says something really offensive, and then, like, somehow that's funny. <laughs> because it just angers people. <laughs> yeah. Like, there are some things where you can kind of tiptoe the line, where it's like in this gray area where you're saying something kind of offensive, and it's funny. But, and tasteful. But a lot of the times, it's just straight out, like slur or something and then they think that it's hilarious and there will be people who say that it's hilarious and they'll all laugh together which is messed yeah. up which is messed up yeah it's just like a it's just like um i don't know if you've ever watched uh twitch streamers or like what uh their chat bit. is like but but usually their chat just like spamming like like emotes and like just being one brain cell idiots and i think that just <laughs> transferred from there to discord server so Somebody says something, like, offensive or, like, a slur or something like that, and everybody just types in Omega Lol in chat, and, mm. <laughs> and that's it. I'm a Twitch noob. I started watching Twitch. I mean, I still don't watch a lot. Yeah. There are only, like, two or three streamers that I regularly watch, and that is, like, one is a mental health channel, so <laughs> he's a yeah. doctor, so <laughs> that's a very different Is it story. Dr. K? It, it is Dr. K. <laughs> Hell yeah, Dr. K. I love that guy. <laughs> I love that guy. He's like, he he speaks to you about stuff and he speaks about gaming. He speaks about so many things yes. that you understand. And yeah, I like watching sense. him. And like a lot of the times I'll see like people that I've watched on YouTube because I don't really go on Twitch, but I watch a lot of the streamers is like videos on YouTube mm -hmm. and VODs and stuff like that. So like, I'll see like people I'm like, hey, I know that streamer. I like his content. Oh <laughs> shit. He's on Dr. K. Let's see what's going on. And exactly. I'm like, <laughs> I actually found him through Jacksepticeye. Oh really? Yeah. I think I found him through like um like Michael Reeves or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Like uh I don't remember who it was, but I started watching like a lot of his other ones from other creators that I liked and even creators that I didn't like cuz they the topic seemed interesting. Yeah. The one thing that I relate to Dr. K most is the way he speaks about him being a boomer. I feel like that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I still You're don't not, know. Aren't you? I don't know. I'm 20, almost 27, so I don't know if I am or not. No. I, I feel like that. No. I feel old inside. You know, it's like I don't get what these people are saying. It makes sense in a way if I try too hard, but otherwise I'm like, <laughs> no. So you you understand my struggle. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, when everybody's typing one word things and I'm like, I have paragraph after paragraph of responses and I'm like, uh, what am I doing different? <laughs> so yeah. It's just like, this is not how I remember the internet being. What happened? 
<laughs> I mean, to be honest, I'm new to the internet as well. I got introduced to what? it when I was in, you know, after, uh, during graduation. So, yeah. I used, oh, okay. to, I used to live in an island where no internet was there and, you know, yeah, it was kind of cut off from the entire world except the television. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I sounded like it's sad, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't think it sounded sad. I mean, I hear so much about uh, other countries that are also in like that general area mm. and uh, the people that come out of those. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's interesting. I want to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you wouldn't expect, you know, people's life to be, for example, right now, if you tell somebody or, you know, today's teenagers that you can't live with internet for the rest of your life, or let's say just one year, they'll freak out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Especially if they're like from Europe or North America, mm -hmm. where it's basically Even like here, ingrained actually. in their society. Really? Yeah. I've, I've seen my younger cousins. They like, you know, the game PUBG? Yes. So many of them dropped out of schools. Not exactly dropped out because that's not an option here because you'll get, you know, yeah. you'll get serious lessons from your parents if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to get a beating if you don't go to school. <laughs> you know, whatever form of beating is suitable for that family that is. Some people yeah. go verbally, some people go, you know, the physical route. So. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I got so much beating when I was young. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah. But I think it's also just the culture difference. Yeah, I mean, we don't take it like I'll call, you know, emergency nine one one because my mom is beating me. Yeah. We don't even think about that yeah. because mom listens yeah, to no. that. She'll be like, "I'll give you second beating for that." Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I get that. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's it's been fun. It's been fun. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I just think that it's a, a since a lot of them are younger and the internet became more of a, a thing for like in their lifetime mm -hmm. then for them to just suddenly not have it it's a lot harder for them true true Makes versus sense. somebody that like already grew up and then then the internet came into their to their life yeah i mean we knew how to survive without it so i guess it didn't make that much of a difference yeah <laughs> sure helps but i mean i wouldn't be able to speak to you right now if it wasn't for the internet yeah, exactly. This whole <laughs> this whole music scene wouldn't exist. Exactly. <laughs> Except for maybe like in like one specific part of like a country. Yeah. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being here. It was uh, we got off on a very different tangent at the end. But <laughs> that was. Oh, fun. I'm all about tangents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one last thing I'll mention. You you sound very different from what you you know what your profile picture looks like and. Of course. That's what everybody says. <laughs> very, very different from your music. <laughs> That's again what everybody says. <laughs> For some reason, when I'm starting to do this, like talk on like solo, and then they hear me do that, then they say I sound different again. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> I can't win. You don't have to win. You just have to be you. <laughs> That's, That's how you win. I'm doing. <laughs> You're doing a good job. <laughs> Yeah. So Jacob, thank you so much for being here and I hope you have a good rest of the day and do let me know if you want, I don't know, uh, want to have a conversation in the future sometime. Yeah, sure. Thank you for having me. No problem. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was really good. All right. So that was Jacob and I'll add an introduction and yeah, all that tangent at the end, that's fine. But yeah, what do you think about these conversations? Do you like talking about music or do you guys like listening to, you know, music stuff or all kinds of stuff? Because I am thinking about expanding this to different directions, but depending on the response that you guys are giving me, I will decide on some things. So it's still being experimented on. So let me know what you think about things and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.